Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Cairo. This is a bonus episode. What I'm going to do in this bonus episode is I'm going to actually show you the Cairo game files themselves and kind of explain to you that, um, well, I found some interesting things that kind of give me an insight on the game and how it was built. And I thought this might be interesting since I don't think a lot of uh, Let's Players have probably done this before with a game. At any rate, what I did was I went to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Cairo, and wherever you install Cairo, this is where it's going to be installed usually, if you install it through Steam. And under here, we can see that we have Cairo data, the executable file, and libraries. Now, here we've got Cairo release notes. Um, of course, this opens up a notepad. Um... You know, so there's not really anything interesting here to notice. But if you go into Cairo Data, you'll see that you've got a resources folder. And this gives us a clue to how the game was built. So it was built with Unity, or the Unity engine. So what I did was I looked up the Unity engine to see how the Unity engine worked, how the Unity engine compiled games, etc. And what I found is that the Unity engine, what it normally does, in most cases, is it creates these assets files, these files of the extension assets, .assets. Now, the thing about these asset files, and notice that there are 74 um, asset files here that we have to look at, 74 asset files. Um, the thing about these asset files is that they are actually openable in a program called the Unity Assets Explorer. And this one usually, um, I've opened up resources.assets. You can actually open up other files here. Let me open up the, uh, let's see, I'm going to open up towards the end. Let's do 74. And what you can do is you can actually see some of these files that were included in the game. And this is a MAT file. I'm not sure what that is. I guess it's kind of a material file or um, I'm not sure. But you've got the texture file. And you'll notice here you can actually convert texture to DDS. And DDS is a file that's, uh, you can convert that directly to JPEG if you want. And that's your texture file. And then you've got mesh files and other things like that. Uh, let me open up another assets file that's a little bigger. Um, let's, uh, let's go to the resources. Okay, this is a very, very, very big file. And um, there's a lot of resources in this one here and you can see shaders and things like that vortex effects so it's kind of interesting so what I did was and this took uh, quite a bit of time but I went through all 74 files plus the resources.assets file here and I extracted them all to um, a folder and you can see here what I did here is I have shared assets and resources all the way over to 74. So I have all of these files extracted out. And you can see here, uh, I've got all of the files kind of available for me to look at. Some of the files I haven't associated with programs yet, some I have. Um, if you take a look here, um, anything with a .dds file, there, it can be openable with a file called WTV. And sometimes it doesn't work, just be honest with you. Sometimes you have to directly um, export the file. But at any rate, what you do here with some of these, let's take a look at this one. And this one doesn't work. Let me open one that actually works. Give me a second. Um, let's see. Light maps usually don't work. This might work. No, nope, it doesn't. WTV, um, which is the program I'm using to view some of these textures, is very buggy, unfortunately. And I've got to find a file that does work. Uh, let's see. Give me a moment see if this works. Nope. Some of these have like different layers to them and they don't display properly all the time. Okay, this might work. Well, no. That one doesn't work either. Well, sorry about that. Uh, give me a second here. I may just make a cut. Okay, this one works. Never mind. And this is Shared Assets 10. You can see here the raw DDS file, the raw texture file. It's actually reversed. It's flipped horizontally. And it's also 
rotated 180 degrees. So what I had to do was go into a program called ALC and batch edit all of these files that I exported and rotated them and flipped them. But to export them, what I used was a program, and let me see if I can find it here. This is called, uh, it's a freeware program called Easy to Convert DDS to JPEG. And basically what you do is, um, well, you just click and drag the file over there and you can convert it and have an image quality of 100, whatever you want to do. Um, and I'll try to link to some of these um, files in the description if you want to play around with this. Um, as always, back up your game just in case you mess anything up. Now, you probably won't if you just extract all these shared assets files, but at any rate, if you don't want to mess anything up, always back up your stuff. It's not a bad idea. At any rate, what I'd like to show now is that what you can get out of this is you can get AUG files, which are um, lossless, um, and I've got it opening up in Winamp. I don't like Winamp, though, um, because I don't normally use AUG. I usually use FLAC. But anyway, AUG is um, a lossless codec here, and here you can kind of um, take a listen to some of these sounds, and I may make uh, maybe two extra videos for some of these. I don't know yet. It depends on if anybody's interested or not. Um, you can maybe take a listen. I don't know if there's anything there to listen to. Let me try something else. Yeah. Like this one, for example, Music Bells 1 through 16. That's that first auxiliary puzzle. Uh, you can get radio noise. And you can also get, um, let's see, the secret music clue. So you can extract that if you want. Uh, you got the freight elevator sound on the game. If you want to listen to that. You've also got, um, let's see here. Um, you got some seagull sound effects. I don't know where these came from. I don't know where these came from. You remember there's actually a seagull in the white garden, but I couldn't get these sounds to trigger, so I don't know. Also, you've got, uh, let's see, there's the, um, if I can find the, um, here it is. Zero, zero, nine, six, one, zero, five. Zero, zero, one, zero, five. So that's the uh, number station. And I think there may be another one in here somewhere. I can't find it. I basically just scanned the whole thing to find um, the number stations. So I think that's kind of interesting. What's this, I wonder? For, I don't think I'll listen to this. Yeah, so you can get the sounds out of the game. That's kind of interesting. Also, uh, I'm going to go scan through some of these to sh kind of show you some of the extra uh, things in the game. So give me a moment. Um, I extracted some of the images. Uh, let me squeeze this down here so you can actually see everything. Um, I'm going to scan through some of these. These are just gradients here. Um, I'm going to actually show you the uh, file names, too, so you can see that. Some of the file names actually give you a clue as to uh, the names of some of the levels. So I pulled out some of the more interesting ones. This one was called Africa Clouds Text. Um, this one didn't flip properly, so let me flip that. This is, uh, or maybe it was correct, I don't know. This one's called Apocalypse Texture. This was from that red uh, tree room in the first hub. And we have that apocalyptic imagery. So we have a few of those. So if you wanted to see those better, you could. 
this is just a texture file for the astronaut. Um, this is for the banyan tree at the ending of the game. We've got some sort of a uh, texture here. This was actually in the secret ending area. And this one's called bristol.txt.jpg. I don't know if this is a bridge out of Bristol or something. I'm not familiar with it. Or it looks like a painting to me. Looks kind of strange. But at any rate, it's there. More bush textures. Um, this was for the campfire. Now this is really weird. I don't know why this is in the game or where this came from. Um, it's called Cartoon Female Capris 2K. Um, I don't know if this was a test or something, but it was in there. And I thought that was kind of strange. You see the um, teeth and the shoes and whatnot. So, yeah. And these are the grass textures. These cubes that were in that gas chamber in the secondary hub of the tower. The first part of the tower, what I mentioned in the last video. Yeah, this is how I know the uh, textures were different materials on earth like grass and sand and stone and whatnot also here is a file i found that showed cairo was apparently a demo um so apparently for windows and mac so we did test it on a windows and a mac machine uh this was from the ending of the game you could probably remember that more texture files this was from the uh, second vision puzzle or auxiliary puzzle um, this was from the third, I think, no, the first, the first auxiliary puzzle, because this was off in the background, these buildings, and some of these textures weren't even used. Um, so I saw, I found this is kind of interesting. Yeah. All these scans of, uh, images here of buildings. I'm not sure where that one comes from, or these. Or maybe they're roofs of a building. I don't know. Some of these are just game textures. Some of these, I don't know where they come from. Now here's a grass and stone texture. Or well, grass and grass dead texture. Various grass textures throughout the game, uh, throughout the resource files, even though they weren't used. This is a ground texture. So it looks like this is kind of painted in somehow. And they just kind of use this uh, selections that they wanted to use. Okay, now this is where this, um, let me zoom in here. The uh, third auxiliary puzzle, this is why it was so difficult to see. This is from the Red Hub. And this is the side of one of the games. This is added in there, I suppose. Uh, so this is the solution to the third auxiliary puzzle. So, yeah. Here are the sketches from the... Um, ending there. So that was directly from the game. Um, by the way, each of the portals is basically one of these textures. And then uh, there's kind of a, a filter added over it. So if you're curious how that worked. And this is called the Garden Control Room. Now some of the names I thought were kind of interesting, and I'll go over that in a second. Actually, let me go back here. Sorry if this takes too long. I'll try to keep this under 15 minutes or 20 minutes. This is the hex clue. This is called hex clue. So, yeah. Let me go forward a little bit. I could probably just use the arrow keys faster. Anyways, uh, so this is called the garden. So the official name for this was the garden. The garden tower. The side room. Some of these official names are kind of interesting. And some of the official names actually give us... Um, a meaning to what it is. This was called the mine. If that you remember that blue puzzle with that map room, the mine lift. And that was where the freight elevator sound was. That giant ball was called the power ball. One of the game facts actually called it the firefly room, but they called it the power ball. This was called the sky lab, the red planetarium, with the second auxiliary puzzle. And uh, you remember the exercise room? Um, that was called the labor puzzle. And if you remember the secondary part of the hub, the puzzles had to do with the brain, or some something to do with brains or skills. So you had the labor puzzle, the logic puzzle. The labor puzzle was exercising, so we had labor. And the logic puzzle had to do with logic. And then the other puzzle was a skill puzzle, where we had to jump over things. So it was actually kind of using our logic with our brain. And the puzzle that um, had kind of the Plinko-looking thing, the Pachinko thing, with the lines that well, I'll show that in a second. Or maybe I'll um, 
cover that. The the well, it was the game, the puzzle that had the um. Maybe I'll have an inset video. The puzzle that had the um. That it was kind of difficult to control the line. Well, that actually was a luck puzzle that was completely by chance, and I didn't know that. But uh, the uh, I'll show you how I figured that one out. Anyways, this is uh, two of the images from the labor puzzle, the pyramid and Sisyphus. And there's a lot of a texture. I don't know where this came from. Um, Aristotle from the logic puzzle, a Boolean graphic there, Einstein from the logic puzzle, and math. Now, in the luck puzzle, we had these images telling us it was a game of chance. So we had the luck cards, lucky coins, lucky dice, and the luck statue. Now here was from the uh, first auxiliary puzzle. Actually, a camelback was scanned in, and the uh, logo wasn't visible there, but, you know, that's all right. And here's the straps of the camelback, some symbols. This is the desktop <laughs> that we saw at the secret ending. There's a parking lot uh, for some reason. I don't know where that was, actually. Uh, this one didn't uh, extract right, but this is the texture for the poem for the Hollow Man. And this was the background for the texture, I think, for the poem. There was also the uh, texture for the Red Bull cans. If you couldn't tell the uh, first auxiliary puzzle, the vision puzzle, the cans are actually Red Bull cans. More stone textures. Some of these were not used. Tile textures were not used. These roof textures. Um, some of them were. This was actually the texture for the seagull and the, um, and the white garden. Secret ending texture. The shuttle texture, the one for the skeleton, and actually that room, that security room, the watching room, was called the office, believe it or not. This is for the skill puzzle, the discus. And uh, that covers most of them there. And this is the tower, the office, the human and the DNA that we saw there. And this was for the ty uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'm not sure where this was. It was a wall etching somewhere. Um... It's a maple wood texture for, I think, the wooden desk. And these yard textures were not used anywhere. I don't know what they were for. So, anyways, that covers most of the auxiliary stuff. So, um, if you have any questions or whatever, let me know. I'm going to link to the um, to the files that I used to extract all this stuff in the description. And um, I'll probably just create like an image or um, gallery of all the um, images so you can actually look at that separately and link that in the description as well. So um, thank you again for watching. And I thought this was kind of an interesting behind the scenes look at the game. So have a wonderful day. Goodbye.